penny amount higher, chapter 9 on integration, the mixed exercise 9R at the end. First one, it says, Please do the following, evaluate the integral and draw a sketch to illustrate the integral as an area. Well, the first part would be this, just simply evaluating the integral, nothing to do with areas. Well, the process of integration is the reverse of differentiation. 2 would have come from 2x, 3x would have come from x squared, divide by that, that's 3 upon 2x squared, plus there might have been some number. However, since I'm going to be evaluating it, that particular constant will appear in both parts of the subtraction, so it's not necessary. So it's just this part of it that's going to get evaluated twice. And that's what happens with an integral. It's simply the value of it at the end, subtract the value it had at the beginning, irrespective of whatever happens in between. So what I've got for this then, so it's going to be 2 times 4 plus 3 times the 4 squared, that's its end value, minus its initial value, which is 2 times just 1, plus 3 upon 2 times the 1 squared, being its initial value. Now it's just a piece of computation. You could type it all into your calculator, or you could work it out manually. So what have I got here? I've got 8, and then that's going to be 24, take away, and that's a 2, and that's a 1 and a half, a 3 upon 2. So I've got 24 plus 6 is 30, take away 3 up and 2. 30, take away 3 up and 2, which is take away 1 and a half, so that's going to be 28 and a half. Not unit squared, just 28 and a half. That's the value of this integral. Now the second part says, interpret that as an area. Well, interpret it as an area, it means the area under the curve, now, y equals, if I just reverse it a little bit, 3x plus 2 is easily identified as a straight line which cuts the y-axis at 2 with a gradient of 3. I won't put a proper gradient of 3, it would fly off the page. So I'll just put it something like this. So that would be that line. It's the area between that curve and the x-axis from x equals 1 to x equals 4. In other words, it's going to be the area of this trapezium. I suppose in this particular case you could work out that area. Because you know how to work at the area of a trapezium is the average base times height. Coming from, if you were to go halfway along that line and flip those tri that triangle would fit in that triangle, it'd make a rectangle. The width of that rectangle would be 3. Its height would be halfway between the two heights. So that particular length is going to be used to form to get the y coordinate. That's 5. 3 fours plus 2, that's 14, that's 19, that makes 9.5 then. That would be 9.5. The rectangle formed from that trapezium would be 3 times 9.5, and, and 3 times 9.5 is 28.5. Right, that's the first bit. Evaluate this integral. So, opposite of differentiation, 4 would have come from a linear term, 4x. x squared would have come from a power higher. Add 1 to the power, divide by that power. There could have been a constant. It doesn't match in this case because I'm evaluating it twice. I'm evaluating at 6, I'm evaluating at 0, and whatever the constant was would simply dis disappear by subtraction, so it doesn't get involved in that. So I'm evaluating at 6, being its final value, so that's 4 times 6, minus a third of 6 cubed, minus, I'll just put 0 minus 0 for those two parts, because they only involve x and x is 0. So what's that going to be? So that's 24. That's going to be 36 times a 6, which a third of it is 2, so it's going to be 72. Take away 0. So that's going to give me negative 48 altogether. Now the second part, what would that be as an interpretation of that integral as an area? Well, the area would be 4 minus x squared if I had that, y equals 4 minus x squared. x squared would be the correct way around parabola. Negative x squared is upside down. Shift it up 4. I think I'll flatten it out a bit here. So it's going to look something like this. There's y, there's 0, there's x. If I wanted to find where it cut the x-axis, I'd have to equate that to 0. Well, that would be the same as 2 minus x, 2 plus x. So it cuts at negative 2 and 2. So the area going from 0 to 6 means the area from 0 to 2, plus continue until you reach 6. I can't really show that properly, because that area is going to go quite far on. 
I'll even take it as far as that, which is still not yet far enough. Then, why is this answer negative in this case? Well, simply because, as an area, if you started working out the heights of these little strips, or rather the areas of these little strips as you work your way along, these have all got positive values, so they're building up. They might be getting smaller and smaller, but the total's still building up. But then once they reach two, the heights of them now are negatives. So these are beginning to subtract away the ones you previously had, until eventually, those two areas would be the same and cancel to zero, and then all the rest of them that were left after that are going to start to build up an overall negative value if you simply took the area as the resulting integral. Because when you perceive an area, you perceive areas, whereas an integral on its own, pure and simple, simply means the value at the end take away the value at the start, no matter what happened in between.